These are the steps to put together a single bench. The steps for the double bench are essentially the same, except you'll have one extra bench in the middle that you'll need to put together. This particular bike has an electric pedal assist installed. You can see the large black battery box near the back end of the bike. Start by inserting the seat supports. These are the side panels. The smaller panels are the ones that go in the back, and the larger ones will go in the middle if you have a double bench bike. Next, you want to put the front supports that support your steering column. Just insert them right into the frame. The holes typically line up well, but every once in a while, you got to use a little bit of force just to push or pull to get it into the right spot. The front fender support is the larger U-shaped piece with the two little wings that stick out where the headlight mounts. The smaller U-shaped pieces are the rear fender supports. You also have a side support for the rear seat, and if you have a double bench, there'll be some side supports that are a little bit shorter for the center bench. Insert all these support pieces and look to make sure that they line up doesn't have to be an exact fit, but when you tighten up the bolts, everything should fit together nicely. You want to just ensure that the connection points or tabs will line up flush with one another. Attach the small rubber boot gaskets where the steering column will attach and as well as where all the canopy upright supports will attach. These keep water from dripping down inside the frame of the bike. There will be two larger boot gaskets right where the front fender connects into the frame of the bike. Next, I'm going to insert the front fender support into those larger boot gaskets and push it into the frame so that it lines up with the rest of the frame of the front end of the bike. Then I'm going to attach the steering column to the upright supports in the front. At this point, we have not attached any nuts or bolts to any of the parts. We're simply just getting them in place going to want to attach them in a certain order which will make the assembly much easier. You want some pieces to be a little bit loose so you have some wiggle room to be able to make adjustments as you're tightening up and connecting uh, other parts to one another. I've inserted one side of the steering column into the upright support and then going over to insert the other side of the steering column. I grab the camera to come in for a little bit closer look just so you can see the how the steering column inserts into the upright support. Again, we have not used any nuts or bolts, just putting everything into place. The front and rear fenders have a protective film on them just to keep them from getting scuffs and scratches. You can peel this film off with your fingernails. Some people choose to leave it on because they like the white color or sometimes it's a blue color, but it usually will get scratched and scuffed up and look pretty bad uh, before too long. So best just to peel that material off.
tighten this up with her socket here. That held down. That should hold down the other side. Also need to put a little nut right there. And the finger tighten. Come back and tighten that up later with a wrench. Once we've got that fender secured. Come underneath this. I'm gonna put a bolt right here. I'm just gonna get on. Get more of this. And the same on this side. Wrong way. support that goes to here. This is where you want that wiggle room. Let me go ahead and put one down here. Let me go a little bit loose. I'm gonna come in up here. So I'm gonna want that wiggle room. Leave a little bit of wiggle room. Because you want to have a little room to put your seat in. And the seat backrest. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. See right here. Can't really get. Either an adjustable wrench or this time. It's easy to get. Fender secure in place. Come over here. Put these two bolts in. Again, just get them finger tight with a little wiggle. Now we've got the whole rear support uh, bolted in, uh, but loose. That way we still have some wiggle room to be able to put the seats in between and also the backrest in between here. So that's the next step. So we want the more medium length bolts. through there, enough to bite through. Mm -hmm. And then the same on the other side here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That wiggle room. Just not enough to bite in. Let me get one of my slightly longer bolts.
Here we are under the seat. I'm looking for this right here. I want to put a washer on that. Now, I'm going to do this on the other side here. So we want to put together the front end of the bike. You're going to take these and line them up. Push your bolt out. So it takes a little bit to line them up. And then you put your bolt down. After both of those are attached, you want to attach your finger support right here. The same thing. Line it up. Put your bolt there. A little wiggle room to line it up. So that your front end has secured your fenders. And you've just secured your front end support right here. Then you want to hit these two bolts underneath here. And go ahead and put those in. And tighten them up. As I tighten that up, it'll pull this down into place. See, there's a little bit of a gap there. Again, tighten that up with your socket, pull it right down into place. And that's your front end. Once all your front end points are in place, I'm going to come back over here and secure the front upright support. So there will be two, one, and two. I'll go ahead and put your bolt in there. And a little bit of a in. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. Things with the curved edge like that, going back.
want to seat it down in here so it's flush against that. You don't want it up on top of this. One is longer than the other. The one on the passenger side will be the longer side one. You drop that over here. And my driver's side is a little bit shorter because my brake handle is on the driver's side so it doesn't have to go across the length of the bike. And let's go the camera here. So what we're going to do this again is an electric pedal assist. So this will look slightly different. This is your electric pedal assist. This is going to fit right into here. We're going to start right here on this thread. Thread it through all of these loops. One here as we go up the bike. And then we'll come in. I'll try to hold it where I can. Just going to feed that through the loop here. In here you want to come on the outside of this. A little support piece so that it's not getting anywhere near the chest. Crank. Over here. And I usually go ahead and pull it all the way through until you get this piece right where it's going to seat in. You don't have to actually seat it now, but you want it lined up uh, about at the right spot. That's so you have the right amount of slack and tension through here. Now it's a little bit easier to work with this piece. And sorry for the shaky video. I feed that up through there. Pin that up through there. Now some people all think this is something. That actually doesn't do anything. That just supports this together. You could put a little bolt and washer there, but it's really not necessary. I don't recommend it's not part of our steps. And then I'm going to fold this right into here. Uh, just for now. Let that uh, thing tight for just a little bit. Now don't attach the end first. You want to attach here before you do the end. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This is the passenger side. So this is what your brake cup looks like uh, without the electric motor. And here's the passenger side. You see this little tab here is what keeps the brake from spinning. And here's your attachment points uh, where your brake's going to come through on this side. So let's do the same process. I'll leave this through here. And then the outside of this. It's the same thing for the double bench. The brakes will be a little bit longer. This wire is for our uh, display, uh, so don't worry about that's only for the electric models. We pull that whole thing through until we get this lined up uh, approximately where it's going to be. Uh, and it's just going to be right here, or like that. We'll wait to attach that. Let me bring my cable back through. I'm going to feed this in here. And then up through here. Pull the slack through. Notice there's another loop right here. And across. And it goes right to there. And on an adjustable wrench. Now this is a little bit bigger. These are pretty snug. You do this one hand and hold the camera. There you go. Take that little nut off, just set it aside. And now your brake handle should go up and pull against uh, this and pull it down to engage it. This little flip lever is like a parking brake or a lock. So we're gonna pull it up there. Now what we wanna do is have this right here come to this side and this one come to the top. So the driver's side comes up to the top, passenger side comes to the bottom.
in there. Do the same thing here on the bottom to the side. see the passenger side cable comes in through the bottom it's right in this little channel here and then hooks in through there and then the top's the same thing for the driver side into the top we want this piece to hold the brake cable so these the tension of these cables should be spinning it this way rotating up against that so when I pull down so I'm pulling the cables and applying the brake parking brake mechanism you put all the way down and flip this little tab over uh, and that essentially puts it in the park for you. Uh, this needs to be bent up. These parking tabs can be bent a little bit. Make sure that's seated all the way down and then put your little mat back on there and you want to just tighten it up with your wrench. This goes right through here. And then this is going to line up with that. I'm going to line that up so it's right in there. You can see. And just a little bit of rain. Now that your brakes are installed, you can put your steering wheel in. So this just inserts right in there. It should slide in nicely. Uh, sometimes uh, the shaft on these things is a little bit tight. You can take some light sandpaper and sand it, or a little WD-40 and grease it down. Passenger side, same thing. It just slides right in. If it's a little tight fit, try sanding it. Or you can take this plastic cap off right here. This pops right off. And you can hit it with a mallet just to hammer it in. You want to be gentle with it, but sometimes it does need a little bit to tap it in. So this is the passenger side. You just take this larger nut right here and screw that on. That just keeps the wheel from being pulled uh, back and coming off. Uh, and I'm going to need two hands to hold the wheel. There we go. I'm going to spin it while I'm ready. So there we go. That just keeps the wheel from getting up to pull out like that. And we're going to attach our steering column. There's two pieces. The smaller piece is the one that goes down at the bottom. And then the larger piece is going to attach up here to the wheel. So let's first attach the bottom piece. So that's kind of how this works. If you look at the rack and pinion steering here, you can see it's got these little grooves in it and then it goes in right there that little part is what you want to line right up with that hole so that way you can put a screw through it and you can see one side is not threaded the other side is threaded that's where the screw will go into so let's just put that on just like this sometimes you gotta jiggle or tap it down a little bit and again for the screw right with the grip. That's it, and then you're going to put one of the medium longer bolts in. You have to get a pull at the place. And so I'm going to grab your bolt, stick it in there, do it as tight as you can with your fingers. And then this is another spot where the socket wrench may not work. You can twist a little bit by just turning the wheels. So turning the wheels is like steering the bike, so you can see that move around. And by doing that, you can get your socket wrench
There's a tunangle here. No, you can. Your socket wrench in. And I'll just tighten her up. The key is to make sure that goes all the way through and threads into the other side there. And I bolt all the way through here, and you can see it poking through the other side there a little bit, so it's fully seated and threaded in there. That way, that's not coming off. Okay, now the next step is just to take your shaft. Let me set this down. You guys can see that. Your shaft here. I'm just going to slide it right on top of here. You'll see that between the wheel. That's how it spins. I can the steering. There's a little space right there where you can fit a small nut. I'll just keep a little bit of movement like this. And we'll go to that plug. The cool part is what you got up here attaching it to your string. So let's get the camera closer over here. You can look on your steering wheel. You see there's a little kind of a pinhole right there. That's going to line up. Not with this opening and the other side, which is threaded, which is just like the bottom one, but this piece right over here. You can see there's a little threaded hole. So we're just going to put that right on there. I'm going to turn my wheel a little bit just to line it up easier. And what I want to do is put one small screw right into there and thread it in, and that'll hold it in place. You can see here through that hole because it doesn't have a little cut out in the shaft you won't be able to put a screw there effectively and then you can see this piece is almost all the way up the top with a slight gap so I need it to line up this pin to go right into that little hole you want to put your socket on it make sure you get it nice and tight so that holds in there good and now your steering column should be firmly attached and so that's complete Put a little holder screw right in here. And one of your short ones will do. Let's just get it held in place so that you have the length right. One thing to you note when you're tightening this, don't go all the way down because now you're going to be trying to tighten the part that's welded to that. So you make sure your socket is just on this part of the screw. That way you can get that piece tightened. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting against the weld and potentially uh, break it there. One of the last things you need before you can ride is the pedals. So if you notice, this is your crank arm. It's got an R because it's on the right side of the crank set here. And on the other side, you'll have a L on this one. Um, it doesn't mean the right side of the bike. It's the right side of the crank set. So over here on the driver's side, you can see there's an R uh, on the right side and there's an L on the other. So are even though it's on the left side of the bike because it's the right side of the crank set so now what you want to line up is on your pedals so if you look there's a little either R or an L to tell you which side of the crank set that they go on not which side of the bike so these are threaded a particular way you're going to want to put it in there and you should be able to kind of get it going with your hand if you can't do that then you check to make sure that you don't have something cross threaded or that uh, you're on the wrong side so again the, the R will go to the R side then the L to the L side and it should uh, thread in in the direction that you would be pedaling that way when you pedal uh, moving forward it's not going to unthread itself it could unthread itself by pedaling backwards but we're well, not going to do that because pedaling backwards you just free spin a couple of times so get that finger tight best you can and you just want to take your adjustable wrench um, Put it right on there you can see it's got a, a little bit of a uh, side there to get your last uh, bit tightened just so it's in there nice and snug and you're going to want to repeat that for all the pedals now the bike is completed you want to go back and check all those connections so all these bolts particularly the ones underneath sometimes those get forgotten right here I'm going to go back and take my socket or wrench and I need to check all these bolts that they're tightened up. So 
go back through and get these back here by the wheel. Under here, and I'm doing the back side there. Now we want to go back in and tighten all those up. You can see right here when I tighten this, it will pull this down when I tighten that bolt up underneath. Get it nice and tight and snug right now. It's got a little, little looseness. Go back and tighten here, here, here. Every bolt that you put on, you want to double check now that you got everything now nice and tight now that everything is all connected. Again, you can squeeze this in a little bit to make it fit. And just put your bolt like that. And a little wiggle in to line it up. It's a really long bolt. Actually, the uh, medium length ones are there as well. But that'll get the job done. wired headlights is just a single bolt that attaches on one of the single tabs like this photo here. We have our lights done. We can connect the child seat here. This seat just hooks right on to the frame. And make sure you hook it. The metal boot part, not this part. So right here. You know, the seat belt. Put the seat back in here. Put the slack in for this little adjustment loop. Now, as you take the rest of the loop of it, shut it back. So, again, this is on the frame part here, not on this part. You want it on that. And then all I do is loop this around here. Put the slack in through that buckle. So I can get a nice little strap that's adjustable. And do the same thing on the other side. And the last step is just to secure the child seat in place. So you'll have this bar right here. And attach between here and here. So the first step 